Not all exercise is suitable for everyone. To reduce the risk of injury, consult your doctor before participating in this or any other exercise program. If you feel any pain, discomfort, or dizziness, do not continue. The creators, producers, participants, and distributors of this program disclaim any liability or loss in connection with the exercise and instruction herein. Welcome to Power Yoga Mind and Body. My name's Adrian Reed. Our theme for today, hips. We're gonna start standing up. You're all already there. When you're ready, just go ahead and stand nice and flat on your feet. We're gonna inhale, bring your shoulders up, and exhale, roll them back and down just to get a nice, strong stance. We're gonna float right into Vrikshasana tree. So when you're ready, you can either cross your right heel in front of your left ankle, bring your right heel above your left knee, or you can draw your heel all the way up into your groin. If you're up in that higher position, I want you to have your heel further forward than your toes. So see if you can float your foot, your toes, a little far toward the back. We're a little open toward the back, open through the hips, hands drop to prayer. We're gonna go five good breaths there. So since our focus today is on hips, I want you to focus on your hips while you're in this pose, meaning you're gonna open through your right knee, which gives you a little bit more extension through your thighs, a little more opening through your hips. If you fall out of the pose, no worries, just pop right back in. From there, let's sweep your arms overhead. You got it. So you can either open them up shoulders width or you can interlace all but your pointer fingers and get nice and long from your left heel to your fingertips. Let's go a couple good breaths there. Again, keep that opening through that right knee, opening through your hips. Exhale, go ahead and release your hands down to namaste and inhale, kick that right heel off to the side, shake it out a little bit. Same thing other side when you're ready. We're gonna cross left ankle in front of your right. You're gonna bring your left heel over your right knee, or you're gonna draw that heel all the way up into your groin. Again, if you do that, have your heel further forward than your toes. So your toes are floating toward the wall behind. Hands drop to namaste. Open through that left knee. Let's go five good breaths in center again here. Beautiful, everybody. If you find a focal point, something to look at and fix your gaze, it really does help with your balance. Nice, calm breath. And then after your fifth breath here, let's inhale, sweep your arms up overhead and get a little more extension in that pose. Don't lose the attention on your hips, so really keep that left knee floating open. You can interlace your hands up overhead if that feels good for you too. We're going two more breaths there, looking good. Beautiful, after your second breath, float your hands down to namaste, kick that left heel out to the side, shake it out a little bit, I almost walked right into your leg. Beautiful, let's do a little bit of work with Dancer, not Raj Asana, and we're gonna float into this nice and easy. It's early in class. So we're gonna drop your left hand in front, palm down, downward, it's at shoulder's height. You're gonna reach back and grab your right ankle with your right hand. When you're ready, you're gonna drive that right heel up and toward the wall behind you and extend forward with your left hand. Again, focus today is hips. So try and work on squaring through your hips. You may notice the location of your shoulders changes that a little bit. So if you float forward with your right shoulder and back with your left shoulder, that helps to square those hips a little more. We're gonna go two more breaths here. Nice job, exhale, come on up, release, shake that out a little bit. These guys on the set said, don't hold the balancing poses long, but I'm holding them anyway, guys. Same thing on the other side, when you're ready. Reach back, grab your left ankle with your left hand. Right hand comes forward, palm downward at shoulder's height. Sweep your left heel, push it up toward the ceiling and back toward the wall behind you. A nice easy one, we don't have to push too hard when it's early in class. Extend far forward with your right hand. Again, square through the hips and let that come a little bit through the shoulders. So come forward with your left shoulder and back with your right shoulder. Beautiful, give me two more breaths there. I'm sorry if I'm working, walking in anybody's fo focal point here. Exhale, go ahead and release. Shake that out a little bit. Aaron, you popped out of that quickly like, oh, thank goodness. 
We're going to drop right back into a runner's lunge. So when you're ready, take a big step back with your left foot. Right leg is forward, and we're going to drop down to your left knee. All right, so lay your left toes flat. We're going to sink your hips down into the mat. Make sure your right knee is over your right ankle. And let's go a couple good breaths there. So relax through the torso and just sink those hips down into the mat. Head and neck is relaxed. Diane, you may want to step a little further forward. See how your knee's going past your ankle? That's the way. Let's bring a little more work to the hips here. We're going to float both hands to the outside of your right foot. So I want you specifically to try and get your left elbow on the outside of your right foot. If you can, both hands sweep to the side. You can even look toward the wall behind and sink downward with your hips. You should feel a nice stretch and nice release through this area. Everybody feeling that stretch? Nice. Let's go two more breaths there. Keep your focus on your hips. Nice, long, full inhales, nice, long, deep exhales where you, where you let your hips sink a little further down. Wonderful, exhale, float back to center. I want you to bring both hands now on the inside of your right foot. If you can, drop down to your elbows. If you can from there, face drops down to the mat as well. Let's go a couple deep breaths there. Once again, leave your hips sinking downward toward the mat. Relax your head and neck. You're trying to get depth through that pose. One more deep breath there. Looking good, everybody. And then exhale, straighten up your arms. I want you to float back with your hips, straighten up your right leg and pop your right toes upward. You're drawing your chin towards your right big toe. So lengthening hips to heel, getting a nice stretch across the back of that right leg while you're releasing some of the work we just did through your hips. Let's go two more breaths there. The more you flex your right foot, the more you're gonna feel that across the back of your right leg. Wonderful, exhale, come on up. We're gonna swap that up. So tuck your left toes under, straighten up your left leg. We're gonna go back with your right leg and we're gonna swing forward with your left leg. So raised runners on the other side to start. When you're ready, drop that right knee down to the mat, lay your right toes flat. Once again, make sure you make that adjustment so your knee is right on top of your ankle. Don't let your knee extend past your ankle. And we're just gonna drop your torso to your left thigh. So relax through your upper body, sink your hips down into the mat. So let your focus fall on stretching through the hips. We're going three more breaths there. If you don't feel too much of a stretch, walk forward with your front foot or back with your back leg. And you'll notice that will open you a little bit wider there. Beautiful, from there, go ahead and sweep your hands to the outer edge of your left leg. Again, try and get your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. Drop your hands down to the mat and you wanna look toward the wall behind you and then sink downward with that right hip. You should feel a nice stretch right along the front of your right hip. Beautiful, let's go three more deep breaths there. Is that okay for you? Did I hit you in the groin too much? That thought just occurred to me. Two more breaths there, looking good, everybody. And then after your second breath, go ahead and float your hands to the inside of that left foot. Drop down to your forearms, face down to the mat if you can get there. So going a little deeper again. Focus on hips, breathing through, relaxing through. Doing a beautiful job, everybody. Relax your head and neck, just see if you can sink it down. Nice, Lydia, give it up. That's wonderful. Wonderful, when you're ready, straighten up your arms. Let's float back with your hips, straighten up your left leg. So get a little bit of a stretch across the back of that left leg while releasing the work we just did in our hips. Couple good breaths there. The more you flex that left foot, the more you're gonna feel that across the back of your left leg. Don't let that focus be too much there as much as it is about releasing through the hips. Wonderful, when you're ready, come on up from that. We're gonna roll onto your back and do happy baby. Why don't you do your head toward the uh, top edge of your mat instead of the back edge. You're gonna bend your knees, pull them in towards your chest and rock side to side gently, massage your lower back. 
if you want, you can bring your, go, go ahead into that, your ankles over your knees, grab the insides of your feet and rock side to side gently that way. Not a very pretty pose, admittedly, but it definitely does give you some release through the hips. So you're just rocking side to side, gently massaging your lower back, releasing through the hips. Nice job. When you're ready, go ahead and release out of that. We're going to roll back over onto your stomach, head toward the top edge of your mat still, guys. We're going to float up into a plank position. And if plank is too much for you, I want you to come to bent arms, so elbows instead. So you choose what feels good for you. We're going to throw a nice hip stretch in here. When you're ready, right foot comes as far forward as possible. So we're going five breaths here. Sweep your foot as far forward as you can. Beautiful, everybody. The further forward you bring your foot, the more work you're adding to your hips, your hip flexors, your abs, your arms. I always say, if this is hard, breathe fast, be done with it. When you guys are at your five breaths, some of you may already be there, drop your foot behind, lay down flat on your stomach, relax for a breath or two. So I love that stretch. Works upper body, works abs, and works hips all at the same time. And I always look for those stretches where you can maximize and work multiple muscles or muscle groups at the same time. Fabulous. We do that a lot in class at the studio. When you guys are ready, come on back up, either plank or onto your elbows, whichever feels better for you. When you're ready, left foot comes as far forward as you possibly can. If you can sweep that, those toes right up by your shoulder, I say go for it. Tickle yourself in the ear there. <laughs> nice job, that's tough through the arms, tough through the abs, looking good, Diane. Try and keep those hips down so you're more in plank, yes. After your five breaths here, sweep your leg behind, lower down onto your stomach, relax a couple of breaths, beautiful. Try and let your hips relax there. Shake that out a little bit when you need to. When you guys are ready, we're gonna roll over onto your backs. Keep your head toward the top edge of your mat if you don't mind. If you want, you can go to happy baby once again. So you can bend your knees in toward your chest. You can grab the sides of your feet and rock side to side, gently massage your lower back and get a little bit of a release through the hips. You guys are all so quiet. Maybe we need to do that last one again, yeah? <laughs> no. Go ahead and lay your legs down flat on the mat. We're going to float right to a supta baddha konasana, so laying down in butterfly. So you're going to bring the bottoms of your feet together, and just comfortably so. You're going to pull your heels in towards your body, and if you want, you can let your hands rest on the insides of your knees. This is really nice through the groin, really good for your hip flexors. If it is too much for you, you can roll up blankets and place it underneath your knees, and that helps support your legs a little bit more. Beautiful, nice and relaxed. And let's go a couple more deep breaths there. Letting your legs relax, try and avoid the urge, or resist, I should say, the urge for your groin muscles to tighten up. Just let them relax and relent and give in. From there, sweep your hands to the outer edges of your knees. I want you to use the strength of your arms and bring your legs back together. Straighten your legs up. You're gonna draw your arms overhead. I want you to use the strength of your arms and abs. Come on up to a seated position. You guys notice I throw that in whenever I can. We're gonna spin around. So you're gonna face the front edge of your mat. We're gonna float into a seated butterfly. So bring the bottoms of your feet together. I want that to be a nice wide angle butterfly. So draw the bottoms of your feet together and then bring your feet as far forward as you can while still keeping the bottoms of them together. We're gonna inhale, sweep up, get nice and tall, sit bones to fingertips. Exhale, fall forward slowly. So you're just extending your hands as far forward as you can get them, take your time. When you can go no further forward, drop your hands down to the mat. I want you to draw your chin towards your big toes. So notice the difference that makes in your stretch. You should feel that actively through your groin, actively through your hip flexors. Three more deep breaths there. Looking good, everybody, doing great. See if every inhale you can lengthen through your spine and every exhale you can deepen into that stretch. Wonderful, after your third breath, come on up. 
Go ahead and release that. Hands come to the outer edges of your knees. Use your arms to bring your legs back together again. Straighten it up, shake it on out a little bit. Beautiful, we're gonna float into a wide angle balancing position. So you're gonna draw your hands behind you. You're either gonna hook the back of your calves or your big toes, or you can hold your feet as well. We're gonna open up into a nice wide angle balance. Try and be relaxed through the legs, and I know that's easier said than done, so you're letting your arms really do all the work to hold your legs up there. We're gonna go three more breaths there. Keep that lower back nice and straight and strong. If you feel good there, I want you to stay there. If you'd like a little more work to it, hands come together, palms together. We're gonna go five good breaths there. Anybody with me? <laughs> Fabulous. Woo, hard on the hip flexors, we're doing good. Exhale, hands come back to your feet, your calves, whatever you can do. We're going a couple more deep breaths there, beautiful. And then inhale, use your arms to bring your legs back together. We're gonna float back into a butterfly position. Not too wide, not too close here. Hands drop to your ankles. Inhale, lengthen through your upper body. And exhale, go ahead and fall forward there. You may notice as you fall forward, it may be helpful to allow your feet to open like a book as you fall. That brings your knees a little lower down. If you wanna flare your elbows out, and draw your legs down with your elbows. Feel free to do that as well. Let's go five more deep breaths there. Beautiful, everybody. Inhaling and breathing into your hip flexors, your groin, your lower back, wherever you may be feeling that stretch. And exhaling, letting that area relax and release. Nice job. From there, go ahead and draw your torso upward. Bring your hands to the outer edges of your knees. Draw your legs together, straighten them up. Shake that out a little bit. Nice job, everybody. We're gonna roll on over to happy baby again. So head toward the top edge of your mat. Knees in towards your chest, rocking side to side or dropping the happy baby and releasing your hips that way, rocking gently side to side. Looking good, keep that breath nice and relaxed. And then when you're ready, go ahead and release your feet flat on the floor so legs are straight, arms come overhead. When you're ready, use the strength of your arms and abs. You know I was gonna say it, come on up to a seated position. And we're gonna turn around and face toward the front edge of your mat. We're gonna do a little bit of work with pigeon. We're gonna try and get that pigeon into a really nice deep pigeon. So we're gonna go into it in a very slow, methodical way. So let's go right leg forward, left leg behind, float right into a pigeon, Kapatasana for me. Start with your right heel, right towards your left hip. Your hips should be square toward the front edge of your mat. Your back leg, back foot, nice and straight. Inhale, look up, take a nice arch back, upper body only. And then exhale, go ahead and walk forward. I want you to find a, an arm position that you really can relax in here. So hands are either down by your, your sides. You can float your arms into a folded position and drop your forehead there, or you can lengthen nice and long and leave your arms forward. Utilize your breath here. Allow everything to just sink down into the mat. This should be a nice passive stretch. So nothing should be working here. Everything should be completely relaxed, completely draping, sinking more deeply into the mat with every single exhale. We're gonna go one more breath in this position. And then exhale, go ahead and draw your torso upward. Let's get a little bit more deep in this pose. So when you're ready, shift your weight to your right hand side. I want you to come a little further forward with your right heel. Not too much, you'll know why in a moment if you've not done this before. Re-square your hips toward the front edge of your mat. You may notice it already. Hands drop down by your waist. Inhale, look up, give a nice arch back, upper only. And exhale, go ahead and walk forward there. Fall to that same hand position that was the hand position of comfort for you last time. So allow your body to find the same level of relaxation, even though that pose may be a little more intense for you today. A nice passive, relaxed, calm stretch where you're utilizing every single exhale to allow you to sink a little further down. We're gonna go two more breaths on that side.
And then after your second breath, go ahead and draw your torso up. One last time, you're gonna shift your weight off toward the right hand side. You're gonna bring your right heel as far forward as possible. If you can, you can float into Hanumanasana, so a full split. Come on, Aaron, we'll do splits together, man. You got it, hands drop by your waist. Come on, Curtis, split with us. Inhale, look up, take a nice arch back, and exhale, let's go ahead and fall forward there. Again, even if you're in a split, let that work come through the hips. You're extending forward with your left hip, back with your right hip. Rock on, Diane. Beautiful, calm breath, quiet mind. Hands are in a comfortable position. Can you find the same level of relaxation in this intense pose as you can in the pose that we started with? Two more deep breaths here. Let it sink in, nice job. You gotta try and square a tiny bit more if you can, Laura, that's the way. Wow. Exhale, come on up, release that. Draw your heel in towards your hip. Swing your left leg around. You got it. Shake that out a little bit through the legs. Let's do that same series on the other side in a moment. So shake it out first. When you're ready, left knee in front, right leg swings behind. So let's get pigeon, kapotasana on the other side. Fabulous. Square your hips toward the front edge of your mat. Your right heel, sorry, left heel should be in towards your right hip. Look up, take a nice arch back, upper back only. And then exhale, go ahead and fall forward. Again, let this be the benchmark. Let this be the pose where you find relaxation. Arms in a comfortable position. Head and neck is relaxed. Shoulders are relaxed. Hips are nice and square. A nice passive stretch where you're allowing your body to just sink into the One more deep breath there, looking good. And then after that breath, draw your torso upward. We're gonna shift your weight off toward the left-hand side this time. Bring your left heel a little further forward. You know where we're going, so try and go about halfway to your deepest point. Resquare your hips, inhale, look up, get that nice arch back, upper back, and then exhale. Go ahead and fall forward there. We got five beautiful breaths there again. Find that same level of relaxation, so really allow your body to sink into that stretch. Torso's nice and long, shoulders and shoulder blades are relaxed, breath is nice and calm. Legs are resisting the urge to fight. One more deep breath there, looking good everybody, that's fabulous. And then exhale, go ahead and sweep your torso up. Last position, shift your weight off toward the left-hand side. Bring that left heel as far forward as you can. If you want to swing into full Hanumanasana split, feel free to do that. Hands drop down by your waist. Inhale, look up, give a nice calm arch back, upper back. Exhale, go ahead and fall forward there. Looking good, everybody. Wonderful, no matter what pose you are in, no matter where your leg is, let this come from the hip. So you're coming forward with your right hip, back with your left hip. Relax through your torso. Can you be as relaxed in this intense stretch as you were in the same stretch when we started on this side? One more deep breath there. You guys are all looking wonderful. And then after that one breath, slowly draw your torso upward, swing your right leg in front, release that, shake it out a little bit. Let's do one more happy baby here. So go ahead and lay down flat on your back. Head can be toward the top edge of your mat or the back edge, I suppose it doesn't matter, guys. When you're ready, happy baby. Just for a moment or two, just get that last final hip release. Rocking side to side gently. The more you pull your knees down toward the mat, the more release you're gonna get. Wonderful, when you're ready, release your legs. We're gonna spin around, so come on up to a seated position, guys, and spin around for me. Head toward the back edge of your mat. Believe it or not, we are done. Let's get ready for Shavasana.
The final pose of class is the most important in yoga, called Shavasana. This pose is what you've worked the entire class to achieve, an exploration of stillness in action. As you lay on your mat, allow your entire body to come to rest. Let your feet flop open, bring your hands by your sides, palms upward. Close your eyes. Let your mind and body relax completely. The purpose of this time is to just be. Be still in your heart, still in your body, still in yourself. Try to remain in this pose for five to 10 minutes, finding health and harmony within. Thank you for your time and hard work today. Namaste. If you'd like to continue to improve your strength, stamina, flexibility, and balance, order Power Yoga for Athletes. This hour-long video is for yogis who embrace a more active lifestyle. Call 1-866-629-1591 or visit adrianreed.com. For tips and secrets on Power Yoga, visit WUSF.org and click on the Power Yoga icon. You'll find frequently asked questions and show information from Adrian Reed. 